Hey guys, today um, we are going to go over some uh, some opening with the Hyper Accelerated Dragon. Um, I ended up making a new friend with uh, Peter Livesey. Um, he made this incredible app called Chess Tactics. I suggest you check it out in the App Store. Um, you can make your own tactics in there, see what other people have made. Um, it, it's got a great opening section. You can even build your own repertoire and save it um, to kind of kind of develop yourself as a chess player. Um, so today we're just going to go ahead and play some chess and then we're going to go over the Hyper Accelerated Dragon opening which uh, he's going to kind of teach me a little bit on. As I normally play the, the regular dragon or the accelerated dragon and the Hyper Accelerated Dragon is a little bit more of a uh, aggressive opening and it's a good playing style for black. Yep. So uh, enjoy. Awesome. Alright, cool. Five plus eight. What made you sign on the eight? I didn't. It just popped up. I didn't see it. <laughs> Oops. Uh. <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah, I'll just play. Kind of into a Sicilian. Well, I guess I should have been playing Sicilian anyway. That's what we're talking about. I've been mixing up my opening repertoire recently. Oh yeah. By my coach's recommendation, and so don't worry, I'm already got a theory here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So I was growing pains with that. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, <God. laughs> No! <laughs> that was a good game. That was, <laughs> that was a really good game. Uh, you were killing me, and then I almost got tied, and then you killed me. You were definitely winning before you played your up to the wrong I I know, the very end there. I have one blunder and just checkmate. <laughs> oh, oh, awful. But good. Yeah, that was, that was a good game. Yeah, that was interesting. Um, yeah, I honestly was out of theory on week two there. <laughs> so what? What did you say? I, I was out of theory on week two there. I actually don't oh, know. yeah. I'm just playing right now. I'm just like, sweet openings. Perfect. <laughs>
Well, do you want to go over the uh, the hyper accelerated dragon? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I used to play this as my main opening to black against people for a while. And okay. I think the ultimate opening is first of all, it's like pretty solid. Um, like it's 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 a good opening, and um, it has a lot of good Sicilian themes in it. So the kind of moves you play in it are good in every single like C five opening you're gonna play. Okay. Um, and the thing is, if white plays perfectly, then white has a small advantage, as white usually does. Sure. But yeah. along the way, there are so many places where white can screw up, and for black, it's just really easy to play because you basically put the pieces on the same squares every time. Okay. Perfect. Um, so yeah, it starts out with e4, yeah, go to Sicilian, and um, at this point there are a couple of options. You can go straight for g3. Um, I sort of prefer to play knight c6 just to kind of hide my hand a little bit. Sure. Um, you know, at this point white can play tons of things. They can just go d6 and go to close Sicilian, but that's just a close Sicilian at that point. <laughs> that's just different. But this is just if the white... If white goes with the open. And then, um, yes, yeah, so you think you played the dragon a bit, right? Yeah, yeah, I played the dragon. Um, yeah, well, you get to this type of stuff. So, in general, in the Sicilian, black is like a general rule that black is always, has always equalized or better if black can play d5. Okay. And so it's like, Every single game, I'm just like looking to see if I can play this move. Okay. So the general idea of the accelerated dragon is that if you play d6 and your goal is to play d5, then at some point you're going to end up playing, taking two moves to play this. Makes sense. And so you may lose the tempo at some point. And so the idea of the hyper accelerated dragon is like to delay playing d6 as so long as you don't have to waste possible. that move. Okay. At some point, you can go straight to d5. Hmm. Um, so, so yeah, and so, so the white takes here, and then at this point, instead of going for d6, um, go straight to. Um, okay, and then usually at this point, I mean, there's a few different, few different ways, but um, usually white doesn't want to trade here because otherwise it just helps you strengthen your center. Again, if, if white ever takes, then d5 becomes really uh, easy yeah. because your C pawn is going to be here. So um, white's usually saying, "Okay, I know you're going to be in charge of your bishop. I'm going to strengthen the knight here, so it's not hacked twice." Um, this is a, a small move order thing, I and mean, you're going to play bishop g7. But I like to play this move first because it essentially forces white to defend this pawn. Mm. Um, so it kind of keeps the line more for. Um, also, there's ways for white to screw this up and not realize that you're attacking this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then, you push up here. And, okay, at this point, white has a bit of a choice. In, I'd say, 50, 60, 70% of games, I play, I nearly always play this move. Um, because white sort of generally likes this setup because it's a good setup for white. Uh, this bishop is really powerful. We mm -hmm. seems to be a castle here. Um, so white nearly always goes for this, and then you just So this is the general setup. And uh, here, uh, let's hide, hide the computer analysis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, is a, this is the first really good position for black. Uh, in this position, white really only has one good move to play. Uh, so yeah, any thoughts? What would you play here as white? Um, as white, probably, probably castle is probably what I would play. Yep, you and everyone else, the castle. And this is not accurate from white. And at okay. this point, black can just seize a little bit of initiative. It's not like, this isn't a trap opening, black's not winning at this point. Mm -hmm. But they have this threat of just taking on... And so white must take. Ah, and then you go. Okay. And again, like this isn't winning at all for black. It's actually I think pretty even. But again, white 
I had so many choices to make here. I mean, you could treat the knight, you could take on like that, they could take on the pawn here, uh, they could take on the knight, um, you know, they could retreat the bishop. And so usually at this point, like honestly, I see my opponent like a minute to two minutes to try to work out. Yeah. Out. <laughs> Can I have a chance? And really, um, everything here is at least even. Um, I mean, it's, so let's see, yeah, if, if white retreats with the bishop or something, here you just end up up a pawn. Um, white sometimes takes on the bishop, and then you get this kind of position, and, mm. and um, you know, this is under attack, so then they need to be six back, and I think you can just kind of go six here. And the key is all these positions, you, you take up a couple of pieces, black's nearly always better off in end games, mm -hmm. um, because really good bishop here, and it, and you know, and then you can put your other bishop here. They don't have a light squared bishop, so then you're attacking this pawn, and it's just like really natural for black to play these types of positions, right? Yeah, right. You have tiles, um, and uh, actually, even as wait, they even script it. Oh yeah, you need to move the bishop at this point. This piece is attacked three times that you needed to move out of, out of this knight's way. But uh, yeah, so you know, this is just a really. I think white's best try here is to trade first. I'm trying to I should say trade first and then uh we can play some things like this and white's still down form. Uh like this. Oh, I need to get most best white here. Um, notes it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can, you can see how this is just to play. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. So white can retreat. Yeah, white white can capture here. Capture retreats here. Take the knight. Take the knight. Okay. Okay. And. Um, so again, like this position is sort of even ish. Both players have the bishop pair. You have this isolated pawn, which is kind of annoying, but you have this great bishop. Mm -hmm. um, one of the really cool things about this bishop is that uh, White kind of wants to play c3 to, you know, blunt this sure. bishop. But then you can put your rook onto b8, and then you're attacking this pawn. And in so many games I've played, white just has to end up like putting this rook here to defend this b pawn. And it's just, it sucks. I mean, this rook's like kind of out of the game. Yeah. So again, definitely. Like, and so at this point, there's also a, a nice uh, motif here where it's like, okay, white's going to attack this pawn, um, but you can actually kind of take a tempo to develop with bishop a. Yeah. And okay, yeah, I like that. Yet again, white has a ton of ways to screw up here. One being, they could like say, oh, well, sure. you're attacking my rook, I can take this pawn. But then after you play your rook, you could, I mean, yeah, that's the problem. When two pieces that are attacked, if you move with tempo, you're going to win. Move here, now I'm attacking the bishop and your rook, you've got to give up one. Wow. Um, so yeah, again, just kind of showing it's like pretty easy for black to play these positions, and even with the best lines like uh, white can screw up. So okay, going back to this position. So castles isn't great for white. Do you have another idea? <laughs> well, uh, I'm looking at I'm looking at f3, but I hate. I mean, you know, I mean that weakens the king side, but f3 I'm... is really common. It's often good to play against the Sicilian. Again, not very good for white. <laughs> uh, so here, uh, there's an interesting move. Uh, queen b6. Okay. And it, yeah. looks, it looks scary because you're like uh, putting my queen right opposite the bishop. But whenever the king's not castled, it's actually the knight that's pinned. Because if the knight moves anywhere, then you take this check. I mean, that makes sense, yeah. And you're also kind of attacking this pawn, which you almost never really take. Um, but you know, again, gives some. I think about 
Yeah. Um, and then White's like, okay, I've protected you on. Uh, I don't like this knight being pinned right now. Um, it's defended twice. Usually White just castles it. And then, again, you can just take this ball. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think this is bad for White because, let's see, what can White do here? Uh, if White, you know, if White takes, this is still just hanging. This is just losing now for White because you take the check. Um, and White takes your knight. Now you just got a triple attack here. I think you probably, you just should take with a bishop here and you just force these trades at the end of everything. <laughs> um, so yeah, this this theme in general of just taking a pawn here, or if there's a pawn here, you know, this happens all the time in Sicilians, and just like unleash this bishop right and use the dragon. I really like that idea. Yeah. Yeah. So again, it's just like you pick the most in this position. Uh, Fifty percent of people castle. Forty percent of people will play F three. <laughs> um, there aren't really many other great moves. I mean, like, oh wait, uh, sorry, break it. Yeah, I mean, maybe Queen D three. Yeah, uh, Queen D three. Oh, D three. Uh, Queen D three. Yeah. People more often play Queen D two, hoping for this queen side castle thing. Sure. Um, in I think either of these. With this, um, you nearly always just want to play this, okay. uh, and you want to change bishop. Um, but yeah, queen d3. Probably same thing, I guess. Um, I should don't get off the top of my head. I might just say play d5. Can we play d5 yet? Let's, let's see. Uh, it's three attackers, two defenders. Maybe this I mean, just through the king and the center, you might want to start opening things up. But now, it probably doesn't work yet. Maybe three. Oh, maybe even like this. Ooh, I like that. I don't know. Yeah, it's like you're just kind of saying, okay, we've well, got to be the queen again now. Yeah, or do it again. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, maybe d5 is a threat because it's actually defended three times. And uh, so maybe you move your queen and just say, like, okay, screw it, let's do it. Hmm. So, pieces. Uh, is there a discovery there? I don't think. So yeah, something like this, and you know, White still has the castles. Bishops and great. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I love it. I tell you something different to this, but uh, so uh, yeah, the only really good move for White, which keeps a bit of advantage for White, is actually to play Bishop B three. Okay, and holding the White fourth. Okay. Yeah, this is kind of the ultimate thing about the open. You, you don't find this move over the. You have to know this. Move. Yeah, right. That's not something you'll calculate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Huh. Um, so, and yeah, so some players will know this move. They know this opening. And um, there are a lot of ways to continue from here. The way I like to play was to play a5. Mm. And this just keeps a lot of pressure onto white. There's this threat here of just going immediately to a4. Um, it's, you've got to calculate what that, when it is. I don't know if you can play it yet, but just to kind of show you an idea. Here, it's like, it looks like you're just giving up a pawn, but actually what you can do is you can grab this pawn. Okay. And now it's like overloaded. So, it takes a knight, you take the picture, and uh, no, no pawn to be won here. You sacrifice a pawn to win a pawn. Um, but, you know, just like in all these positions, just like, look, there's just no pawns here to obstruct your dark square bishop. And I, you know, I don't know if this is exactly the best play on both sides. Yeah. But at, this, at this point, you can't play, you know, I mean, there's, there's lots of ideas why can you start trying to kind of put some pieces here. This square gets a little weak in some lines for you. You always kind of look to play d5. Um, you know, lo lo lots of ideas. So you need to work out what to do with Bishop here, but you know, play something like this. I, I don't know. But yeah, at this point, it's a game, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, I really like that. That's awesome. I'll definitely be exploring more lines on that. 
that's the main line. Um, the other main systems which white play is first of all they can play this move, and so lots of white players in these positions they like to play really aggressive and say like I'm just going to castle inside. Um, in these positions, I think you can just uh, yeah. Well, let me see. Okay, you can castle. I think you can just go straight for this and try to take this stuff to bishop, and then take. This is good main and um because you anything you can trade up the dock square bishop. Uh, sure, yeah, yeah, then we got the, the strong one. Okay. Yeah, and I, I don't know I, I think in general whenever white kind of screws around too much moving this bishop, it, it ends up being bad. I, I I don't remember these lines, but uh you know, uh, I think that now this Oh, this is just hanging now, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why. That's why. <laughs> um, and then the other thing what I can do is say, okay, I know that this is an idea. So I'm actually going to play f3 here. You pass. So, and then they say, okay, I'm now going to play castle. And here, this is kind of why the accelerated dragon, I think, was sort of originally conceived, just because here you can play. Okay, and yeah, and we skip that move. Yeah, and then now I think you kind of maybe a trade down a bit. If White wants to trade down, they can. And it's like, now they, if they castle, I mean, it's just like... It's, Man, <laughs> so White yeah. kind of, White's like, oh crap, I'm going to change my mind. I mean, they trade <laughs> up three. Not good. They still need to get their light spread bishop somewhere. I mean, I don't know. It's... Uh, this now this is not hanging. So you see, I'm literally the natural white thing I play. Um, just like, I mean, where do you even put this bishop? I suppose you gotta just put it there. <laughs> Still doesn't look uh, great. And, you know, these are just, just all on great squares at this point. Um, so, uh, well, yeah, the knight's hanging anyway, because we got the knight, the bishop, and the queen on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, so you gotta defend the knight, so then maybe you have to play this, and then Oh, that's like, just ugly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this still doesn't work, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, I, the last point, I think, is, like, well, why... Why don't Brandon ask this? Um, and the main weakness, I think, is that this point... Um, white can play c4. Okay. And have you, have you had a Moroxy bind out of this opening? Uh-uh, no. Um, yeah, it's basically these type of openings where white plays e4, c4, and basically says to black, like, you're never going to play. Yeah. Huh. Right, which is kind of black's main idea here. Um, so this ends up being quite strong for black, and so, you know, I think, I, I, stop playing around the Accelerated Dragon, see what you think. Um, at some point, you basically need to learn some Roxy Bind 3, once players start playing a lot against you. Okay. Again, I mean, like, I think they have, in this, in this sequence of moves, I think this is the only real chance they have to go into this, because and this is actually why I like playing this move. Because as soon as the knight's here, they can't play this move. Yeah, right, okay. So, you know, usually you play this g3 move and they start worrying about their center and play this, but, you know, this is this is a possible move. And once you play here, um, there, are, there are a bunch of systems, but I, I think you end up with something, I, I don't know if this is accurate, um, but... Uh, but you end up having to play d6 in this opening. And then I think the general plan I used to play with is you actually put your bishop here, um, which looks a bit weird, but you don't really actually ever really want to play these moves. For sure. You can miss them too much. Um, and then you kind of just play for this to break up, play against this pawn. And white never really wants to play this because then your bishop's amazing yeah um so yeah i mean 
I honestly, I don't remember a lot of the theory from Roxy Bind. Um, I tended to not see it that much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe I see it in like five to ten seconds. I don't really see but it. But this is yeah. for White. Like, huh. white, white has some play here. And so, like, you know, if, if you see this a lot, then, you know, you can start learning some of this theory. Yeah. Yeah, I'll definitely look into the Roxy Bind. Yeah, I don't know. It's a fun opening. It's 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 not trappy. It's not like going to be plus three at the end of it. If you send it for these positions, it's like white white like ne didn't ever really want to play these type of positions where you know you end up with like kind of an end game. Yeah, right. And I like that because you know once you get um once you start playing at a certain you know level or whatever, then you know the trappy openings don't often work. Um, yeah, it's not the goal, right? Is to people have seen um, it all, you know. So uh, that's awesome. The take first. This was the main kind of end game we wanted to look at. So generally, yeah, these type of end games where maybe White has to trade here, probably, you know, something like this. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, huh. But uh, yeah. Been played. Yeah, there you go. This has been played four times before. There's been two draws and two two black points. All right. <laughs> That's awesome, yeah. man. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. Man. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna start playing the the hyper accelerated dragon in my blitz games, um, and rapid games. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look forward to seeing. Have you um have you done the tournaments on chess.com? Um you can join specific you like the, where you, uh, No, like uh like daily yeah. tournaments. Um they've got a lot of ones where you can get into specific openings. So you can have a whole tournament that's just based around, say, the Sicilian dragon. Um so everyone starts off in a certain position. It's kinda cool if you're looking to practice uh, an opening. I have not, and yeah, that sounds like a really good idea for where I'm at. Um, I'm trying to learn the Karo Khan right now. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah, so much of this is just like, you gotta just uh, play a bunch of a bunch of games like this, right? Yeah, right, uh, yeah. So. Solidify it. I think some of the daily ones, but never the themed ones. So yeah, I should definitely look into that. There's definitely some Karakana ones, and uh, maybe there's some Bengal Gam ones too that I can jump in on. Yeah, yeah, that sounds. I just, I need to look up the Benko Gambit too. Huh? Yeah, there's a really good uh, Saint Saint Louis Chess Club video on it. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those videos are usually pretty awesome, but I, I, I love Saint Louis Chess Club the videos. Yeah. The Benko Gam yeah, yeah. Um, and it's, I, I was, yeah, I, I was going to go some openings to my coach. My coach was showing me just like these analyses from like the 1990 uh, World Championship or like a, a game for the championship or something like this, right? And there's these really detailed analyses of openings that go into really deep lines. And I'm just like, it must have been so hard to learn chess in the 1990s. Way, like, oh, I can't imagine. Of, yeah, like, just doing it all over the board. <laughs> yeah, like, you can just turn on an engine, or like, or like, oh, I don't know how to. I need a new opening. Okay, I'm just gonna like YouTube search for good chess. Openings. Exactly get, like, right. Yeah, and if you're making yeah, one up, I mean, how do you even know if it's sound? You have to be good enough to know that you're doing the right thing. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. It'll be uh, fun. Wait, that's for sure. Another so blitz what? Game? Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah let's do one more blitz game. All right. Um, actually, I'm trying to been trying to. Uh, be learning the Queen's game declined recently. 
Um, I haven't spent much time on it, honestly.
Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. Ah, I missed Bishop being there. Okay. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's no way out. Good game. Uh, yeah, there's no way out. Good game. <laughs> So what? I think you would have taken that pawn on equal. I think you could have taken a pawn on equal when I clicked. Oh, uh, yeah. Let me see. E4. I just play E4. I'll move 12. Yeah. Um, I think if you take... If you take and I take my knight, and you just take, take with the queen, then you can still play knight F6. I don't think I have very much. Oh, then the pawn on B seven is hanging. I, I I wasn't sure I had enough compensation for the isolated pawn. Yeah, I, I wasn't. Feel like it hangs in the center for it. I wasn't sure whether to take that or not. Um, I was trying to. Yeah, I was trying to think about it. I was trying to think about if I cared if you pushed forward. I didn't think I did, but apparently I did. <laughs> Anytime, anytime white can play like e5, it's just like, let's go on the king's side. Yeah. Because the, you just can't f6 square. Uh, I'm not even sure. I think that. I was wondering also about the. Uh, after I played knight g5, the uh, uh, f5 defense. Um. Probably doesn't. Work, but. Yeah, I was looking at that too. Um, where is this? F five. I'll take. I'll take on the song. You take with the knight, and then it's like you are attacking my queen. But then, oh no, no, no it doesn't work. Because I can just play queen queen six. Oh yeah, right. Then I don't know. This is like smothering territory. Yeah, that, <laughs> it's just alliteration, and yeah, and that king move at the end. I I momentarily forgot your bishop was up there. <laughs> I think your king move at the end. It was like I think the only move you can play there is probably moving a knight knight back to d seven, but then I probably just play queen h six anyway. You move your knight back to d seven. Queen h6. I'm gonna play knight g5 now. I, I don't know as much stopping this. Was it? Yeah, it might have been better for me just to uh, force a queen exchange earlier, and I can't remember where I could have done that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Saying, uh. Oh man, yeah. Saying after you played. Well, oh, computer saying it's over early. <laughs> 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 After you play, after you play the D three, he was saying it's like false ball. Okay. Um. Yeah, I thought it's a, maybe uh maybe knight knight D three is better than you can get your 
Yeah, yeah, probably. I mean, the Kingside problems are still. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's still, still a mess. <laughs> <laughs>